What up? This is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment. How's it going? And I'm here today for the new horror film, The Monster Project, uh, that's opening in Los Angeles and on VOD this Friday, August 18th. And I'm here with the director, Victor. How you doing, sir? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Great film. Now, um, I want to ask you, uh, I'm a big fan of creatures, monsters, and horror movies. Um, so I like this film very much. I'm a big fan of Guillermo del Toro, you know, um, uh, Rick Baker. So what compelled you to create this particular creature monster movie? So, uh, so I grew up reading all of Arl Stein's books. Uh, which was obviously, if you watch the Monster Project, was a huge, uh, you know, it's a clear inspiration uh, for the film. And uh, I also played a video game released by DreamWorks Interactive called Escape from Horrorland, mm. uh, which I, th I played for years as a kid. And I still sometimes just put it on YouTube and just watch it because the whole thing is on YouTube. So I'll just watch it just for fun. The sound design was in insane. Uh, and and, uh, and the, uh, there's a lot of monsters in it as well. So uh, I think that the Goosebumps universe really inspired me from uh, since I was a child, and my love for horror started when I uh, watched Evil Dead. I think my first year in college. Nice. Um, so that's kind of when the Evil Dead Two, the second one, uh, nice. to specify. And so I kind of started really going for horror and. So I, I started working on a film uh, called Carnival at the time uh, when I was 21 years old, I think, or 20 years old. I had started writing it, uh, which is a film about the phobia of clowns uh, or coulrophobia. And it, but it ended up being a quite expensive script to make. Um, and so uh, I met Philip Siebel, who's um, my uh, producer on the film and was the editor and the DP. And we're like, okay, we got to make a movie together. We get along really, really well. So what can we make that's more affordable? And so I started thinking about, you know, some ideas that could be more affordable. And I had seen a movie called The Hamiltons, uh, directed by the Butcher Brothers, and that I quite enjoyed. Um, and and it's a, you know a vampire film. And so I started thinking, you know, because I do like found footage a lot. And so I started thinking, how cool would it be if I made a movie about some filmmakers that decide to go uh, interview a family of vampires, and then. My love for monsters kicked in, and I said, "What about interviewing multiple types of monsters?" Yeah. And that's kind of how it came about. And then I incorporated the my love for video games, you know, especially Call of Duty, into the mix. So, it's, so I kind of incorporated the first person POV camera style into it, yes. which is kind of like a first person shooter, uh, just to because I also wanted to do the opposite of of kind of what uh, found footage films were doing at the time, which is. Like, you know, just, just kind of seeing shadows cross frame, doors open and close and this and that. I wanted to introduce the action early on and kind of keep it going just to, you know, entertain people um, in, that, um, in that respect. Speaking of found footage, ever since Blair Witch and Paranormal Activity, you know, horror fans, you know, many horror fans, including yours truly, like found footage horror. Uh, but some say t two things, you know, to some uh, it caused them dizziness. You know, and it's understandable to each his own. You know, they may get dizzy watching 3D as well. And the other two, uh, the, the other point or the second point is that uh, they say that they can't see what's going on because when the characters are running, sometimes the camera's pointing on the floor. <laughs> so uh, why did you decide to, uh, um, to do fan footage? I, you, you scrub on that a little bit earlier, but if you can elaborate some more. And also, uh, what, some, what were some of the things that you did to address those two issues? So... Yeah, like I mentioned, so originally, uh, yeah, I wanted to come up with a film that was affordable for me to make, but I didn't, it's not like I, I thought of the Moss Project and said, okay, I can make it as a regular feature, but no, I'm going to do it in, in a found, as a found footage type of film. I, I just saw it as a first person perspective film. That's how I saw it from the get go. And so it just, that's how that the adrenaline that I felt from the idea that's that's just the idea that I had, and so I went for it in that uh, for that uh, and made it for that style because that's my that was my vision. Um, now, in terms of the dizziness, I think that the first person POV kind of style of, of having the camera on the forehead actually helped quite a bit because yes. it keeps the camera rather stable throughout the film. Um, and we also, I I mean, we avoided kind of shaking the camera too much. Uh, uh, so, so I think there's only one one part in the film or two parts in the film that actually where we purposely did that? If not, I think that the cameras are actually relatively stable, in my opinion. I mean, um, that's I mean that's what I think. I don't think I, I for I mean the people that have responded so far watching who watched the film have communicated to me that actually 
it's a lot less dizzy of an experience than most films that are of that style uh, so far. Yeah, and I, I like how, you know, you can still see the skinwalker and whatnot. You know, I, I like that. Uh, and also, like you said earlier, you had the GoPro camera on and there's other cameras also installed. Uh, so were the logistics challenges some of the most difficult part or uh, piecing or editing those footage together was the, the most difficult part? <laughs> uh, so the GoPro was difficult to work with, for sure, uh, especially because... Uh, I don't know, our monitors while shooting the monster project were not functioning most of the time. So it was very difficult. Uh, so, you know, I'd be holding the iPad and action and then it just would <laughs> stop. So, and we were so tight. We shot the whole film in 15 days. So we didn't have much time to also review the footage after the take. So, I mean, we quickly see, okay, it looks like, yeah, we got it. Okay. So we move on, but it was very quick paced. Uh, so uh, that was that was a challenge. So editing editing wise, sh yes, uh, I think that the most difficult scene. There were two scenes that were very difficult for us to piece together. It was the initial transformation scene where all the monsters are tra transforming yes. all at once in the same room. That was very difficult to edit, just because there are so many different perspective uh, point of views happening in that scene from different cameras, and there's just a lot going on. Uh, so that was that took us a while. Uh, and we kept re-editing re and re-editing that scene until it felt that you weren't lost. <laughs> uh, and then the other scene that was difficult for us to cut uh, was the basement scene uh, uh, with uh, uh, Shiori. That was uh, also a very tough scene to film. Uh, a very difficult scene to film. We kept It kept popping up at the end of the day, every day or, or night. So around 4, 5, 5 a.m., say, okay, let's rush to the basement. We have 30 minutes to an hour left to film. And we kept trying to get something and it kept getting postponed and postponed. And we just, you know, and so, so we had a very hard time filming that basement scene. I think it, we were cursed <laughs> down there. And um, I mean, it makes sense. We were working with a demon <laughs> in the basement. So there you go. It worked really well. Now, um, as far as creatures or monsters over the years, filmmakers have experimented with designs and the looks, you know, like, I don't know if you see uh, the show, The Strain. It's like a new kind of vampires where it, instead of biting you directly, you know, they, they, there's this thing coming out of their mouths. And then, of course, skinwalkers, people can probably refer to underworld movies, you know, for uh, the looks of the lichens. But yours is, I noticed, a very old-fashioned look, right? Very, very old-school look. I mean, uh, can you explain about coming up with the decisions for the designs? And did you ever, ever come across uh, thoughts of like, you know, how do I make this unique to my own? Uh, so Jim Beinke, who's a guru of special effects, uh, he came on board and I had an idea of what, I wanted the Skinwalker to look like from the from the get go, but he came on board and he is a huge fan of of monster and, and special effects. I mean, he that's that's his job, and he's just phenomenal at it. Mm -hmm. So he put his own twist to it and uh, and went for it. And I, I I just have to thank him for for and people have to thank him for for how the monsters ended up looking on the screen because that was uh, purely entire him. And then I think also that the actors who portrayed those monsters also did a phenomenal job. So um, the Skinwalker particularly was played by Stephen Flores, uh, who had been on board on the film for three years prior to filming and practiced for two years uh, just every once in a while because we kept, we were about to shoot and then, nope, we get postponed. We were going to shoot and kept getting postponed. So the actors, a lot of the actors that were already on board had to wait for a long time. But Stephen Flores, uh, I mean, just playing the Skinwalker also, he, wore, he was wearing wooden blocks uh, below his heel just to kind of, uh, do you know uh, help with the because he had leg extensions as well yes. uh, as playing the skinwalker so so it was a very difficult job and and I asked a lot from him so <laughs> he did a great job demon vampire skinwalker I mean uh, did you only decide on those two three three things alone I mean were there any other creatures that you wanted to fit in but just couldn't into the movie that's a good question uh, we originally those were always. Uh, the creatures that were going to be the main three evil creatures in the film. Uh, however, in the original draft of the interviews, because of course it's it's a documentary where they interview these people, you know, these people who claim to be monsters. Mm -hmm. We did have some fake monsters, people claiming to be monsters who were not really monsters. Uh, we we're going to have them, and you know, arrive and 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 be interviewed, and then the filmmakers realized that they were not real monsters and kick them out. So we were going to do that originally, 
and then it's just wasted time, the script. But uh, I, I forget what other monsters or creatures we had come up with that were going to get interviewed, but um, we did have some of that included in the script originally. So is it fair to say that zombies or other creatures might show up in the sequel? Zombies, no. I don't think zombies. I, I do like zombies. Trust me, I do like it, but it doesn't fit in, the, in that world. Uh, but other creatures, yeah, I'd like to include something else. Absolutely. So we'll see what that is. Now, uh, as I'm winding down to my final questions, uh, when I in interview horror independent filmmakers, they told me um, the reason why they want to do this genre is the easiest to break into the industry. They say, like you said, affordability. It forces you to work with a, a team that you know with skills of technical skills, and if it gets popular, it can get noticed by studios who are searching for that next big horror filmmakers. Uh, do you agree with that? I don't agree that that's the way to go to make your first film. Uh, that's just it's just the idea that I had that I loved that I wanted to make. That's all. Um, so uh, I, I but but. I mean, if people have you know a great idea that they want to make in that style, then then great, they should do it. Because mm -hmm. um, I do have a lot of respect for that style, and I think that it does get, unfortunately, um, from some people, uh, some backlash or some. Uh, so so that's I think that's unfortunate because I think there's a tremendous amount of potential in that genre, and I think it is a beautiful genre if you know taken seriously and properly executed. So and to mention to you, for example, we did storyboard everything that was action oriented in the film beforehand, way beforehand. So that every single team member on the film, whether it was stunts or special effects or makeup, etc., they all knew exactly what we were going for. Um, and uh, so, so it's not like we just went into that location and just kind of whipped our cameras around and and improvised. We we had a plan. We had everything storyboarded and we executed and and made sure that uh, that my vision came across. My last question. I don't know if you've heard this, but Universal Pictures is rebooting all their monsters, creatures movies. You know, bringing back the Mummy, Frankenstein, and uh, Bride of Frankenstein, and, you know, and the Invisible Man. You know, as you know, monster fans to another, one monster fan to another. Here, I mean, if you were if you were their consultant, what would you say to them? How, how would you advise them to make this work? I'd say bring me onto one of those films. <laughs> That's what I would say. I, I know I would love to be a part of that. So that's what I would say. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Big fan of the Monster Project. Check it out. It's in theaters in Los Angeles and on VOD this Friday. Let's rock this.